Hello everyone, welcome back to the Otis and Gabe show. I am J Otis, Gabe's not here again, but you have me again. I'm going to I'm gonna be talking to you guys today about uh, my NFL playoff predictions. It is the divisional round of the playoffs, a big weekend, um, and we got some big matchups this weekend. We got... We got the Tennessee Titans are going to travel to Baltimore and play the Baltimore Ravens. Um, the Texans are going to travel to Kansas City, and they're going to go play Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Um, the Seahawks are going to play the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field, and the Vikings are going to go to the 49ers. So, some big matchups. Uh, this weekend, I'm gonna start by talking about the AFC. Um, Derrick Henry and the Titans playing the playing the Ravens. Big game. Um, here are my keys. Uh, I I kind I broke down every every team that's playing. You know what they need to do. Keys. What I think offensively and defensively. Um, I think first off, offensively. They gotta get Derrick Henry going. If he gets going, he he's hard to stop, and that Tennessee team's hard to stop. Um, I also think too offensively, Tannehill has to be turnover free. He can't turn over the ball. It's a really good Baltimore defense with a good pass rush and a good secondary, and he cannot turn over the ball um, because that that'll be crucial. If they want to have any success. And I think for the Ravens, the the number one priority is stop Derrick Henry. And for me, I believe they need to put the game in Tannehill's hands. They need to make Ryan Tannehill beat them. And if Ryan Tannehill can, you know, if the run game is stopped and Ryan Tannehill is forced to throw the ball, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be betting on the Ravens to be very successful um, in the... In the passing game, because of their good secondary and their really good pass rush, um, so that, that's that's a big key for me. And I also think too, Lamar Jackson just offensively get the running game going. Um, if they can get the ball, you know, Mark Mark Ingram's coming back. He's healthy. He's ready to go. They got a healthy offensive line. Um, I think I think if they can get Mark Ingram going and Lamar Jackson's playing well, running the ball well. It's going to be tough to stop. They're a tough team to stop, and I think they're one of the. They're they got a they got a really good team, and I think a lot of people are. You'd be you'd be a fool not to pick them, um, not to pick them, and I think I think they will get it done. I think the Ravens will get it done this weekend against the Tennessee Titans. Um, next, we got the Texans who are traveling to Kansas City. Kansas City, that's that's going to be that's a tough place to play in the playoff time. Um, it's, yeah, it's a tough place to play, and I think the Texans, my keys are Deshaun Watson, he needs to play like he played in that fourth quarter coming back in that wild card game, because he played very well down the end of the, end of, towards the end of the game, gave him chances, they came back, they won the game in overtime, made a couple of big plays in overtime to get them into field goal range. They kicked the game-winning field goal. Big win. I also think, um, yeah, I think, I, like I said, um, Sean Watson needs to play well. I also think um, they need, defensively, you know, they got to get that pass rush going. J.J. Watt, having him back is huge. Um, he, may, he, may so, he means so much to that defense. And uh, if they can contain... Patrick Mahomes in the pocket, you know. Patrick Mahomes is a lot. Is a lot of times he scrambles, gets out of the pocket, and makes great plays that you know the defense isn't ready for. And I'm I think that the Texans need to contain him in the pocket. If they can do that, you know, Patrick Mahomes is still a really good quarterback in the pocket. So, but you got to keep him in the pocket. You can't let him run out, run out and make plays. 
Um, and you got to see if they can run the ball, too. You know, Kansas City's been, you know, kind of hot. For me, personally, I think Kansas City's been hot and cold um, as far as running the football this year. But those are my keys. And I think for Kansas City, Mahomes, you're at home. You got to go light it up. Um, that Texans, that Texans secondary won't know what hit them if you just go out and if Mahomes goes out and just lights them up. Uh, they have good weapons, good receivers in uh, Nicole Harm, Hardman and um, Travis Kelsey. They got, you know, Tyreek Hill on the outside as well as a burner. So, you know, good weapons. I think they can. If if Patty Mahomes goes out and lights it up, it'll be it'll be trouble for for the Texans. And I think also defensively for the for the Chiefs. Kind of the same thing that I'm saying about the about the Texans for Patrick Mahomes, but I'm saying it about the Kansas City defense for Deshaun Watson. They need to keep Deshaun Watson in the pocket. And if they can force Deshaun Watson to stay in the pocket with a good pass rush, like I said, these mobile quarterbacks, like they like to run. They want to run and make plays. But if you keep them in the pocket and force them to stay in the pocket, it's tough. It's tough for them to uh, make the plays that they're so used to making. So, with all that said, I, I like the Chiefs. I think the Texans they're gonna they're gonna give them a battle, but I think at the end of the day, it's it's Mahomes and the Chiefs at home in the playoffs. And Andy Reid is a really good coach this time of year, so I think they're gonna get it done. So. Next, our next matchup, we got the NFC now. We have the Seattle Seahawks, who are going to go into Green Bay, and they're going to play the Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. This is going to be a good game. I really, um, well, I want to say this first. I think all the games to this point, all the wildcard games were great games. We didn't have any blowouts. We didn't have any, you know, well... There's a couple calls that could have been changed, um, but we didn't have any blowouts. It was good football. We got an overtime game, and that's all you can. Ask. We had two overtime games. That's all you can ask for this time of year is good football. So back to back to the Seahawks Packers game. I feel like the Seahawks. You know, obviously they bring in Marshawn Lynch, who everyone. I mean, I bet you Gruden's really. Really scratching his head, saying, well, we had him a couple years ago, and now he's decided to come back. Yes, he has come back, and I think one of the keys to this game is if the Seahawks can get Marshawn Lynch going. They can run the ball effectively, not just like two, two yards, three yards, but like, you know, maybe get a couple of big plays out of Marshawn Lynch, some of his beast mode runs. Um, then they can, they, I think they'll be able to set up things in the passing game for Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has been so good all year at when they set up the run, they get the play action pass and DK Metcalf has been a great rookie receiver for him. Tyler Lockett, a great receiver for him. So I'm, I really think that's a big key for me is set up the run game get get the play, and then get the play action pass going and get Metcalf going and get Lockett going cuz we saw what DK Metcalf did in the wild card game that was a great performance if he can do that again that Packers secondary is going to have a little they're going to have a little trouble um i think defensively for the Seahawks boy just keep the pass rush coming um 7 sacks against the Eagles, um, but man, keep the pass rush coming, if, if Clowney comes to play, and, again, and they, they can get going up front, ooh, it'll be a long day for Aaron Rodgers, if he's just, you know, having a scramble, run around the pocket, because pocket's collapsing on him, um, so I, I think the, the, the key is a they need a big-time pass rush, and it helps 
for me, I, I felt like their pass rush helped the secondary for the Seahawks because it gave them, you know, a little blanket in the in in the sense of, you know, they're making the quarterback now have to scramble and make a play instead of quarterbacks got time, time, time. You know, he's sitting back there, he's making his reads, um, going through his progressions and finding the guy he wants. So I think that's important also. So for the Packers, defensively, stop the run. Stop Marshawn Lynch and stop the running game. Also, I think they got to contain Russell Wilson. When Russell Wilson is allowed the space to get out of the pocket, just like Patrick Mahomes and just like Lamar Jackson, just like Deshaun Sean Watson, all these quarterbacks, they have they're mobile, they can they can use their legs and they can make great plays out of the pocket. And so you give Russell if you give Russell Wilson that space, Russell Wilson's gonna beat you. He's gonna make great plays and keep keep drives going. You know, that could be it could be third and ten, they're on your you know, you know, they're driving, they're on their you know, the 45-yard line of the Packers, and they could be going in, you know, you know, big-time drive, and they get a, they complete a third and 10, and they keep the drive going. Then they've, you know, five plays later, they go down and score. And the Packers now have to go score or get a field goal to win the game or something. So my key for the, for the Packers' defense is you got to play good coverage against D.K. Metcalf, and Tyra Lockett, and you gotta contain Russell West, or excuse me, Russell Wilson in the pocket, and that's that's I think is important. Um, I think also for the offense, I think for the Packers offense, maybe they I think they could establish a little running game of their own. Um, I think with Aaron Jones, I think they can establish a little running game of their own. Um, and I think also, I think Aaron Rodgers has got to play like the Aaron Rodgers we, 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 we know. The MVP type Aaron Rodgers. Um, I think if he can play really well, you know, he's another guy where if you don't contain him, he'll use his legs, he'll get out of the pocket, and he'll make plays. And he's done a really good job this year, um, with making plays. And he's ha- like he's had his whole career. He's made plays by using his feet, getting out of the pocket. But the games that you watch, when they contain Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, you know, I mean, I get it. Aaron Rodgers isn't the mobile quarterback like Deshaun Watson or like the guy he's facing in Russell Wilson. But he can still make plays. He's, he's very capable of making plays. And he's got a cannon of an arm. So he's gonna he's gonna make plays. So that's my key for Aaron Rodgers. You know, I think he's got to play well. And I think I'm an O lineman, so I'm gonna go with, talk about the O line here. And I think the key is the offensive line for the Packers. If they can shut down Jadavian Clowney, it'll be a long day because we saw the offensive line for the Eagles struggled. Struggled against Jadavian Clowney. Clowney made them look foolish. Um, they were, you know, triple teaming Clowney at one point, as that I saw in the game. And when you get to a point where you have to triple team with the left tackle and uh, two tight ends, it's going to be a long day. So I, I, I feel like the offensive line for the Packers has to play a big game. They have to play well. They have to call out their blitzes, the pressure, because you know Seattle's going to bring some pressure with Clowney, KJ Wright, with you know Bobby Wagner. Um, they're they're guys like they're big time pass rushers. Um, so yeah, that's my key. And so to to you know wrap up this, I you know what I really think I think the Seahawks can win this game. I really do. I think there's a Strong possibility of them winning this game. Now, but personally, though, I would love to see Aaron Rodgers um, do well. I really would. 
he's one of the few veteran quarterbacks that are really experienced in the playoffs that are left. Obviously, Drew Brees, done. Um, Tom Brady, done. You know, I, I would really like to see Aaron Rodgers do well. Um, so I'm going to go with the Packers. I think the Packers can can get the win. And I think the main, like I said, the main focus is watch if, and if you're watching it, and I know a lot of you are going to watch it, watch the offensive line. Now, I know that's some, for some of you, that's unfamiliar, right? It's every time you put on a football game, you're not watching the offensive line. But I'm telling you, as an offensive line, watch the offensive line for the Packers. If they can stop the pass rush, It'll be. I I think the Packers will 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 be six, very successful, and so I got them winning. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Packers, um, in this one. All right, so on to the final game, and this is Minnesota traveling to the 49ers. The 49ers have had a really really good season. Um, there's there's a, they they've played very well, and I think it all starts. You got to look at the defensive side of the ball. Bosa, DeForest Buckner, um, Solomon Thomas, those pass rushers that they have, I think they have almost all first round picks um, up front uh, defensively. And those guys are beasts. And you, as, as far as the Vikings are concerned, that offensive line, another offensive line that I think you got, you should watch for in this game is can they stop the pass rush? That has been really good for the 49ers, and so and so that's what I think. That's that's my for the 49ers. That's my keys as far as defensively, or excuse me, I I feel like the 49ers defensively. That's what they need to do. On the flip side, Minnesota, they have to stop their offensive line has to play well. They have to play well. And they have to, you know, give Kirk Cousins time. And so another thing I'll add to their offense, Minnesota's offense, is they need to run the ball. Because when Dalvin Cook, it's the same thing with the Tennessee Titans. When Derrick Henry's going, he's going. He's a, he's a beast. And I think the same thing with Dalvin Cook. And when Dalvin Cook is going, he's going. And he's a beast. And he's pretty hard to stop. And so, defensively for the 49ers, you got to stop Dalvin Cook. You stop Dalvin Cook and you make Kirk Cousins. My, that's my prediction is if they can stop Dalvin Cook, put the game in Kirk Cousins' hands and make him win the game, who knows, right? It's, you know, then, you're, then you got to figure, you know, can the pass rush get there? And my thing is with Kirk Cousins, having seen him play, you know, with the Redskins, and now with the Vikings, is if I would I would force Kirk Cousins to win the game, take Dalvin Cook out of the game by shutting down the running game and forcing Minnesota to have to throw the ball fifty times or something like that. Because if they have to do that, that's putting a lot of pressure on Kirk Cousins, who this year has relied heavily on a really good run game to set up play action pass just like the Seahawks. Seahawks have had a really good running game this season to set up their play action pass. And so I think defensively for the Vikings, boy, if they can get a pass rush like they had against that Saints. I mean, let me just say this. The Saints, I've seen the Saints play a bunch this season because I'm a Falcons fan, as a lot of you know. And I think, and the two right, the two tackles that the Saints have are Pro Bowl selection tackles, and they got worked. They got worked, and the Vikings won. They didn't have to get crazy with their with their blitzes and with their pass rush. The Vikings were winning their one on one matchups against two against an offensive line in general. I'll say that is really good, and a quarterback who, you know, you keep that man, you keep Drew Brees in the pocket. You know, you got if you don't get to Drew Brees, Drew Brees will will beat you. He'll beat you in the air and he'll make plays. 
But they got to Drew Brees, and they th- and it throws them off. When you get to Drew Brees like that, it's going to throw them off. And I think if the Vikings can get to Jimmy G, just like they did to Drew Brees, it'll be a long day for Jimmy Garoppolo in the 49ers offense. Because they, that is that is the Vikings' defense. Is we're gonna we're gonna we have a good we have a solid four guys up front and two linebackers that play in the box that are that are phenomenal and we are gonna pass rush like crazy and we're gonna we're gonna try to we're we're you know I think they got they're almost gonna force San Francisco to try to run the ball and I think that's the maybe the one weakness I would say I don't know I don't know. If it's if it's a weakness, but the San Francisco defense is good defense, but but yeah, that's that's my that's my keys. And I think to sum it up, I think I think the Vikings are gonna. I like the Vikings a lot. I I really do. I really do. But I think at the end of the day, I think the defense for the 49ers, if they show up. And they can get a pass rush going on Kirk Cousins. I think, I think the the 49ers are going to get the win. So I got the 49ers. So that's going to give me. Um. So that. So yeah, that's it. That's what I got. Um. And so now I'm going to talk about you know the coaching carousel a little bit, as I was going to in the last video. But I will now. Um, as of today, January 6th, um, that I'm recording this, um, Mike McCarthy being named the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I think it's a great move. Um, I think the Cowboys are getting a really good coach. Um, someone who's going to help, number one, help their, off, help their quarterback. And I think they got to pay their quarterback. And number two... They just Jerry Jones just paid his running back, and the production with Zeke this year was you know kind of down. And I think Mike McCarthy is going to understand that he has a good he has a really good offensive line, and they're going to run the ball a lot. They're going to run the ball a lot more than they did, and they're going to get Zeke going. And Zeke Zeke I think will have a really good season next year because of it. Um, also, the Browns still have a. You know, their job's still up in the air. Panthers, their job's still up in the air. The Giants, their job still up in the air. You know, a couple couple names being thrown around. Um, Matt Rule from Baylor. Um, we got the... Um, let's see here. The offensive... Lo- uh, no, offensive coordinator for the Bills is being thrown around there. Um, let's see here. So, I'm going to pull it up, my list that I have here of coaching candidates that I believe are, are still, are at the top, I should say. Um, you know, Ron Rivera obviously was just hired. I think that's a great hire for the Redskins. Um, Eric Benamy, um, the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. Could get a head coaching job this year. Brian Dable, uh, the Buffalo offensive coordinator, is being interviewed for jobs. Um, you know, Brian Lefwich, offensive coordinator for the Bucks, is getting interviewed. Um, Greg Roman, the DC for the Ra- or excuse me, the offensive coordinator for the Ravens, has been getting some looks. Uh, the DC for the 49ers, Robert Sala has been getting some looks. Um, a lot of lot of coaches. A lot of coaches. Um, really good. It's it's a really good coaching class, I think. There's a lot of good coaches out there. And so I think you gotta you gotta hit on one on some of them. And I think that the Cowboys definitely hit on Mike McCarthy. So we'll have to see um, what you know what other what, what other coaches, you know, get hired. And I think That'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, I want to hear your thoughts. I'm going to talk about it more when I get Gabe back. But the pass interference this year, obviously they've 
you've they've now let the replay. You can now replay a pass interference call, offensive or defensive. I I want to know your thoughts. If you're if you're listening to this, give me a comment below. I want to know what do you think. What do you think about the replay? Because I've watched I've watched a lot of NFL football this year, and I've I really think, and I've you know I really think that it's been ineffective. Um, because there's a lot of times where the call is, you know, they call defensive pass interference on the field, but that the offense throws the challenge flag, but the coach basically wastes on the challenge flag because they don't really call, they don't, they don't, they haven't overturned a lot of calls this season. And I think there's, I got to look it up here. Let's see. I wrote it down, wrote down some numbers. Um, this was... Through from week three to October 11th, and I'm going to quote Kevin Seifert as an ESPN article here. 21 challenges were thrown. This was uh, October 11th, 2019, that he wrote this article. Kevin Kevin Seifert, if you want to look it up on uh, ESPN, he wrote this article. 21 challenges were thrown. Only one was successful. And then later in the season, there's he says seven reversals in forty pass interference related reviews. So I want to know. I'll give you my thoughts right now, but I want to know what do you think about the replay, as the replay being able to change pass interference calls and this season. How do you think it's affected this season? Whether it's your team or you know a game that you've seen. You know, we just had an incident with Kyle Rudolph. I went back, watched the play. Yeah, the guy, he shoved. The rule The rule for offensive pass interference is you can't give yourself an advantage. And he, he created space by pushing off, which is a total flag. And they didn't call it. And I think that's, you know, if you're the Saints, you can't blame, you know, the refs for your... Losses two years in a row. This is this year was inexcusable. I thought they the Saints just didn't look good. Um, they couldn't stop the pass rush from Minnesota, and they couldn't stop Kirk Cousins in the fourth quarter. And you know that that's that was the big thing. So you know I thought yes it was pass interference from Kyle Rudolph, but you know what they didn't call it. The game goes on, life goes on, and. You know, you got to move on. At the end of the day, you lost the football game, and so that's that's my opinion. Um, I feel I also want to know too. Leave down, leave in the comments too. What do you think about the overtime rules? Because I have been a fan of having seen you know my team in Super Bowl Fifty One. You know, not get a chance. My MVP quarterback Matt Ryan not get a chance in overtime against a Patriots defense in the Super Bowl. And then, you know, last year we saw a couple instances where, you know, Patty Mahomes didn't get a chance to get on the field. I I am one who's been in favor of, you know, giving the offense, giving the other team a second a chance. I feel like if, even though if they let up a touchdown, I feel like, the other team should have a chance to possess the football. Um, because I think, one, it's going to make the game... It, it might make the game... I think it might make the game a little more entertaining. And I think people want to watch. You know, people last year wanted to watch Patrick Mahomes come back out onto the field after forcing after their defense forced overtime. And we didn't get to see that. So, let me know. And you can also you can also tweet... Um, you can also tweet at me at the um, at the o- Otis and Gabe show. We have a Twitter page. Go follow that. Um, yeah, go follow our Twitter page, uh, the Otis and Gabe show. Um, uh, go go tweet tweet me up. Hit me up. Um, give me your thoughts. You know, hit me down below in the comments. Let me know what you think about these. Uh, these different these different changes in the game, um, I think I think they're they're big decisions that you know they're not going to happen. The change if they were to change, they're not going to happen overnight. But big big decisions, 
big decisions, and I, I am, I'm open. I will talk about it more with Gabe when I get him on. Um, when I get him on soon, we will talk about that, and I'm going to get his thoughts, and we'll share some of your comments, hopefully. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's all I got today. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next time.